All right, folks. So if you've been following the channel, you'll see that uh, I've got a few videos out on the Nano VNA, and this is going to be another one. In the last video, we talked about a software program called Nano VNA Saver that uh, works out pretty well for interfacing your Nano VNA with your computer. And during that video, uh, somebody had mentioned that they like the Rig Expert software better. Well, the good news for them is, is that Rig Expert now supports the Nano VNA, and uh, we're going to walk through that during the course of this video. I wanted to say that if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment or a question below, and I'll do my best to answer them. By interacting with the channel, uh, you help this content become more discoverable by uh, people like you. And it also helps me out a little bit, too. So if it sounds like something you want to watch, why don't you go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. Here we have the Nano VNA that we're going to use in this video. And I just wanted to do a very brief overview of this hardware and how it ships. The one I ordered came in this plastic case and it came with a couple of peripherals. So the first thing is it comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable and you use this to connect the device to your computer. It's pretty self-explanatory. And it also came with two coax cables with SMA uh, male connectors on them. And you can use these to attach antennas or you can use them to measure throughput on the Nano VNA. It also came with these three calibration standards used to calibrate the Nano VNA. This is an open standard. This would be a short standard. And then this would be a 50 ohm load. There you go. When doing a calibration, you gently connect these to the S11 port on the Nano VNA. Now you do what's called a SOLT calibration for short, open, load, and through. And for the through, you connect the coax from the S11 connection to the S21 connection. The antenna that we're going to use in this video is the Edfong DBJ-2 roll-up J-pole antenna. You can pick this up for 34 bucks, and it's one of the best antennas that I've ever bought. It's resonant on 2 meter and 70 centimeter ham bands. You can also buy a commercial version that I believe is more resonant on some of the commercial frequencies. And taking a look at this, you can also add a 6 foot BNC uh, male to BNC female custom cable. And uh, I would order that as well as an adapter. This works great for connecting uh, to handhelds in the field, or you can even use it as a uh, home base station antenna for UHF and VHF. Fantastic antenna. Can't say enough nice things about it. All right, folks, so here we are at the Rig Expert website, and I'll include this link below. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to go to Downloads. And we're going to take a look at a product that they have called AntScope 2, and I'm assuming that stands for Antenoscope. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on that, and it's going to take me to a download page. You can see they have this software for Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu. Uh, we're on a Windows machine, so we're going to go ahead and click that. It takes me to this download directory, and because I'm curious, I always click on things. I clicked on this info.txt, and down here you can see that version 1.1.0 added support for the Nano VNA Analyzer. Let's go back, and then you just click on this file and you download it to your downloads directory. It's a self-extracting executable, so you just click that and it will go ahead and install the software. To keep this video short, I'm not going to walk through the process of installing the software, which is pretty straightforward. It will ask you to install some Microsoft uh, C++ runtime uh, uh, files if you don't have them already installed on your computer. But it's pretty straightforward, it's easy, and it's definitely not the most complex thing when dealing with an NOVNA. Okay, here we are with the Rig Expert software running. And uh, I also have my Nano VNA connected to my computer via the USB-C port. It is powered on and connected to my antenna. So when I come down here to settings, and when I click on settings, down here in the lower left-hand corner, you can see analyzer detection. And by default, it comes set to auto. And it comes over here, and it's connected on COM port 7. So I simply just connect to the Nano VNA by clicking this button. And that part's done. Now if you're on manual detection and you need to be able to connect and you need to find your COM port, you can take a quick look at this pop-up here. It's from Device Manager and then you go down to COM and LPT ports. Another 
Okay, let's take a more in-depth look at the settings panel. So when you're in here, the first thing you have is your measurement system. It's set for metric or imperial. I'd prefer to use imperial because that's what I'm familiar with, but uh, it seems the world is moving towards metric, so we're just going to leave it right there. Over here, you can see your graph hints. You can turn your mar you can show your marker hints, uh, and you can show brief params under cursor. Uh, we'll take a look at all of these things as we go through the uh, the video, and that has rendering with OpenGL. I'm not sure what that means. I know that OpenGL is a library used for graphics, and we're not going to fool with that. Down here, you can change your system impedance in the event that you're working with something other than a 50 ohm system. And then you have your band highlighting. Uh, we're set for ITU Region 2 in the Americas, but you could pick uh, Region 1 or Region 3. Because we're in Region 2, I'm going to leave that as is. Over here in language, I can change it from English to something other than English. Uh, I'm not sure what this says, but I think it says subscribe to the Smoke and Ape channel. Uh, we're just going to leave this set to English. And then I can change the theme from light to dark. Uh, the dark theme doesn't do it for me, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'm going to disconnect my antenna from the Nano VNA, and then I'm going to come over here to the OSL calibration, and that's open short load. Uh, they have a calibration wizard, and then you can also do the calibrations down here uh, manually or on your own. It does a 500 point calibration, which is pretty high resolution. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do the calibration wizard. So I'm going to click start, and it says, please connect an open standard and press OK. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that now. Okay, the open standard's connected, and I click OK. Now I've run through this a couple of times, and it just continually hangs here, and nothing happens. So I'm going to suppose or assume that the calibration wizard does not work with the Nano VNA. Let's see if there's something else we can do to get this to work. So I'm going to close out. I'm going to go back to settings. I left off on the OSL calibration tab, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the manual. So it says right now there's no file chosen. I'm going to hit start open calibration. Connect the open standard and press OK. And I do that. So I've tried a couple of different things, and unfortunately I was never able to complete a full calibration um, using the wizard or the manual process. So what I did is using the calibration standards and the interface on the um, Nano VNA, I did a manual calibration. And what we have here, if you look into the upper right hand corner, is I set start and stop limits just below uh, the 2 meter uh, band and just above the 70 centimeter band. It's a 250 point scan. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run that and see what happens. Um, down here under run, you can do a single sweep or you can do a continuous. Um, and that's where it does the measurements over and over again and gives you an average. So let's go ahead and run and uh, see what we come up with. So here are the results of the scan. And um, I'm not entirely sure that this is 100% accurate. In fact, I don't, I don't believe it is. It's showing a uh, SWR higher than we would expect in the two meter band and different than it presents on the Nano VNA as well as the uh, Nano VNA saver software that we used. So it would appear that the calibration needs to be uh, within this application itself. We're gonna take a few minutes to kind of go through a couple other things and uh, see what the software can do. But let's just keep in mind that um, this is a work in progress and until Ray Expert addresses this, this bug, um, we may have an issue. So what I've done here is I've changed the scan to run at 142 megahertz to 150 megahertz. And that's this red line. The larger sweep was is represented in green. And what I see here is more typical of what I would expect from an SWR standpoint for this particular um, for this particular antenna. Along the top of the screen, there are a number of other values, measurements, and charts that you can take a look at. Um, I'm not smart enough to interpret all of this, so I'm not going to attempt. Um, I can take a look over here at the at the Smith chart, and then you can see this is a very similar to pattern that we got with the Nano VNA Saver software. So I don't know if narrowing that that sweep did anything to help out. Uh, let's go back to our SWR plot, and then uh, we'll take a look at the 440 band. So here we're just going to run from 400 megahertz to uh, 455, and we're going to do a single sweep. And that is similar to the results that we got last time. 
I'm not really sure that uh, that I'm going to trust this software or the Nano VNA at this point. There are a couple other things I wanted to point out. I can export this configuration and then load it and overlay a new scan of a different antenna and that way I can do some comparison. I would just do an export um, and I would save it in one of these formats and then I could just come over here and I could do an import. Also I can print or save this to a PDF uh, in case I want to look at it at a later date and then I can also capture a screenshot and then uh, that will save it to my PC. So the last thing that I wanted to uh, take a look at was in the settings, you also had the ability to adjust your uh, cable length, your velocity factor, um, and your resistance. And then you can come down here and you can see your conductive loss. But what you can do is, is that you can actually select the type of cable that you're working with. So if we picked an ideal 50 ohm cable, uh, for example, and then I added in 50 feet, uh, and I can hit add cable. Uh, this could change the way that uh, that data is represented on your scans. And I'm not sure that was enough to change it much. So I think that's pretty much going to do it, folks. Um, unfortunately, we were unable to get the Nano VNA calibrated via the Rig Expert software, but I think it's exciting to see other manufacturers adopting the Nano VNA as a platform. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this project progresses. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing what happens there. I did once again want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them.